Shores Plan Commission meeting via Zoom. This meeting is being recorded. Can all the roll call, please? Uh, Greg Cox. Here. Richard Hartman. Here. Danny Roberts. Here. Uh, Eleanor Dorman. Here. Richard Wills. Here. Pat Brunstad. Here. Okay. Do I have a motion to approve the meeting agenda? So moved. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion to approve. I have a motion to approve the minutes of February 9th, 2021. I'll move. I'll second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Who seconded? Richard. Okay. Hey, we are to public comments. Sarah, do we have any public comments? I did not receive any public comments in my email. We do have Marlene on the line. Marlene, do you wish to make public comment? No, not today. Then that concludes public comment period. Okay, since now we have the mayor with us, mayor, do you want to talk about things you want us to do or do you want us to go down our, our schedule? Whatever you would like to do, however you would like to do that. Well, I don't want to tie up your time, so if you uh, if Okay, you I, I would be happy to. Um, my part is fairly short. Uh, the council voted uh, seven to zero last night to bring these items forward to you all. And I think uh, I wasn't actually at the meeting, uh, but I think that from what I heard, they were very enthused about bringing these forward. forward. So, so I'm enthused as well. Uh, the first one is um, residential landscaping. And we're really looking at uh, what can we do to be a more attractive city? Uh, we see everything out there and there are no standards. Uh, and I, I know that you all, all probably have ideas of what, what attractive means. Uh, but I think for a city, you know, we're, we're getting ready to spend some uh, budgeted money on beautification, for instance. And beautifying the city is, is a, an interesting task. Uh, when we have such a, a wide variety of interpretations of what's acceptable. So it seemed uh, that we need to have something in place. Uh, the other one is residential building standards. And this is not changing the building code of courts, which we can't do uh, because we're not, you know, whoever it is that does the international building code, but we can set some standards in our community for what we want to see on home building uh, and things like you see some, some houses that come in and they're just kind of chopped off in all directions. There's not much overhang on the roof. There's, there's not really a porch or, or that sort of thing. So uh, I will I will give over some of this discussion. Uh, you actually have a builder on your group now, uh, and you have uh, someone in the form of Rich Hartman, uh, who I don't know what I would call him, uh, a salesman. <laughs> business and, owner, but, business owner. Yeah, okay, business owner, all right, I'll, I'll go with that. No, I'm just teasing you. Um, but I think uh, Pat, uh, can tell us what are some of the standards that other communities have. And I think that's really important. And, and all of us have lived in other communities that either do or don't have such things. And we know the difference. We're not looking for a Stepford approach uh, where you know, we're all sort of regulated and marching in lockstep, but uh, some standards that the community can kind of agree on uh, that don't cost an arm and a leg. We've already gotten some new standards from the, the government that are gonna cost a lot. 
So uh, Pat, I'll turn it over to you and then then Rich. Okay, first, first uh, question I have is um, in the landscape, is there an existing ordinance? I think there might be. I don't think it's much if there is. We have some rules. For instance, when you clear a lot, you know, you have to replace trees with such and such, but it's been um, interpreted loosely. And I think, uh, you know, maybe something we want to envelop within this. Okay, so probably be there... good to start with that. Maybe. Mm -hmm. And um, so I guess we should obtain a copy of that ordinance and then we can add to it or, or replace it. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. And then as far as building standards, I guess that's a discussion that we should have uh, amongst ourselves. I mean, basically what we're trying to do is, um, I'm not gonna say regulate manufactured homes, but set standards in place for both manufacturers and stick built homes that hold it to a certain level that would um, <clears throat> make it more attractive to ocean shores. Um, we have some ideas on that. I know Rich and I have had discussions on it of how we can do it, putting eaves, putting certain deck requirements, porch requirements, that type of thing in place um, that doesn't affect the building code, but um, does affect the building standard. Um, as far as towns that have it now, you can go to places like La Conner, we can go to places like Anacortes. Um, they have standards, Aberdeen Hoquim does not. Um, but we can, we can, and there's probably a lot more out there that we can follow um, and avoid places like Seabrook. So um, I can take a, a bit of a lead on that if, if it's all right with the group to do that and um, start coming up with some examples. The landscape, going to flip it back to landscape, landscape doesn't need to be complicated or expensive, but it does need to be more than just black rock, red rock, or nothing. Um, and, and I think, again, if we start with that ordinance that I do believe has tree replacement, it looks like Alicia, you're on this call, aren't you? Yes, I am. Okay. Um, do you, do you have easy access to that ordinance? I have access on my computer. I don't think I can share that though through the, the through meeting. Zoom. But is it something you could maybe send us that in a PDF or something that we can give us a basis to start off of? Certainly. And then can you provide us with some input that would um, tell us what, when you go through the lot clearing process now, I know you're paying attention to wetlands and you're also paying attention to some of the larger trees. Um, can you kind of tell us what it is, your guidelines that you're going with so we can kind of incorporate that into it? When I go out to look at a lot, I check for wetlands, yes, um, the soil conditions and the vegetation. I check for a significant tree, which is an eight inch caliper tree at breast height. And I count those the best I can. Sometimes there's a lot of them and it's difficult to count all of them. Um, I make notes and take photographs of what's there. And I make notes on the permit telling them that if they have significant trees, if they're removing more than 90%, which is what the code requires, they have to replace them at a ratio of three to one. The code is not specific as to what they have to replace them with. So they could replace it with a, they could replace a spruce tree with a, say, uh, um, what are those ones called? Uh, cypress tree or, um, a rhododendron bush, you know, just, it just says that they have to cover the soil with something after they get their building done. They have to landscape the area that's not covered with a structure. And is there a, is there an, a pervious versus impervious ratio on, um, maybe this is a question for the building department, but um, are we enforcing that now? 
we don't have a ratio as far as the landscaping um, in the building part of the code, we do allow only 40% coverage with a, a structure. So the rest of the lot is um, pervious or vegetation or whatever, natural. Okay, and then the definition of impervious versus pervious, I know that's always been a discussion because Red Rock is considered pervious no, impervious, sorry. Um, but then again, some people think it isn't. So do we have a definition of that? Not that I'm aware of, no. Okay. Okay, that gives us a starting point. So we don't have to- I have a question. Ratio. It's not required for, uh, it doesn't have to be indigenous species. It can be pretty much anything. Right, it does not specify in the code. As long as the deer won't eat it. <clears throat> There's that. <laughs> For a single family lot, it's under 1750-100B landscaping of single family and duplex dwellings. It says the portion of the property not occupied by structures shall be left in its natural state or shall be aesthetically treated with plants, shrubs, trees, or other forms of landscape materials. The plantings used will be those native to the area or those which are suited to survival in the climate and soil conditions of ocean shores. And it, it goes on. Okay. Mayor, Alicia. how? Sorry, go ahead. Alicia. Um, yes. Don't we, isn't there a requirement for a landscaping plan to be filed by the builder prior to uh, uh, clearing the lot? Yes, that's what the code says. When I get a plan for clearing, basically what they're doing is clearing and then they plan to build. When they plan to build, then they provide the, the landscape plan with their plans to build, usually. And I think that's because it's difficult for them when they're, they're preparing to build, they can't landscape it before they build their house. If they do, then they're destroying the landscaping that they put in before they built their house. So it's kind of a, a sticky wicket. You have to kind of work with them because they, they can show you a plan, but it might not work out once they get their house built. Okay, and uh, Richard Wills wanted to say something, but I had Rich Hartman before that. So Rich Hartman? Well, I, uh, I'm an amateur here. It sounds to me like we already have rules on the books and it sounds to me like we're just not enforcing anything. And that's not, I'm not pointing a finger at anyone, but, uh, other than I haven't heard anybody talk about driveways If 40% of the lot can be covered in structure, how much of the lot can be driveway. And then the rest of it has to be, as she read I, it, you know, as I'm looking at some of my neighbors, they've cleared a lot, they've completely red rocked it and then put some kind of a gravel on top of it, plopped a house down. And it's just one big, whatever, six, 7,000 square foot lot. That's, that's all just, you know, gray gravel or that muddy red rock stuff. Um, to me, it's as though they shouldn't have got an occupancy permit and you know, they had the rest, the rest of the build that they had agreed to do. Well, I think, Rich, what we're talking about is, uh, particularly in the South End, there aren't a lot of trees. So they haven't taken trees down. They don't have a requirement to do this or that. Uh, so we're, our hands are tied. It's very limited what we can require them to do if we have no landscaping sort of rules in place. Uh, landscaping. She read, uh, she read well. something that I, I thought was very descriptive. To leave okay, in natural I, state isn't isn't a gravel, seven thousand square foot lot. But it's also an ore. Or landscape it, and if somebody considers putting red rock and and gravel in as landscaping, they've done something. So, I think what yeah. we need is something that okay. is uh, more solid to hang on to. Got it. Okay, uh, Richard. 
So Alicia, as she was describing, she mentioned 40%, and I think Richard uh, Hartman cleared up my confusion. My question is that the size of your dwelling with garage, I'm assuming, can only comprise 40% of the available square footage of your lot. Is that correct? That's an Alicia question, Alicia. Yes, that's correct. Okay. And then so I, if you're if it's not big enough to build up. Presumably, okay. right, Alicia? Mm -hmm. okay. Yes. And then, then I have a, a, a comment about maybe more appropriate when we actually get in and start talking about the nitty gritty. Uh, but my comment about trees is the house across from the community club, uh, uh, those big trees did a lot of damage. Uh, uh, and they are a good argument for not having big trees on your lot. You know, there, there, there are arguments about those things. I've got to say that uh, we have some trees on our lot that were preserved, uh, that if they come down the wrong direction, um, we're toast. <laughs> yeah. But, but we like the trees, you know? I mean, you're, you're in this catch-22. Anyway, anything else that I can help you with, we're, we're excited about this. We think this has possibilities uh, that are enforceable. And as Rich says, do you get a, you know, are you allowed to move in before you've done your landscaping? Uh, and right now, I, I'm quite sure you are because people, you know, you know, you get your house done, you want to move in right away because it's costing you not to be able to move in. Uh, so we have practicalities as well, but when do they do their landscaping? How much time do we give them? All of those things are important. And, you know, maybe it's minimal landscaping, but if it's something that we can really get our teeth into and that's straightforward, that would be really lovely. Uh, and as far as, um, more attractive houses. I have to tell you, when Dean and I moved here, we bought a little bitty house uh, because we didn't want it to be doing housekeeping. Uh, and it had a little tiny stairs on the front and back. And, and, you know, I mean, it just, it was lacking all of those things. And that was really what we did to the house was to put big decks on front and back and do things like that, that made it more attractive to us and more usable to us. We didn't add space otherwise. Uh, you know, it was big enough, but it, it was ugly. And I think that's part of what we're talking about. In the past, we have allowed builders to do just whatever. And I, I actually see that house a couple of different times around town as well. And, and at least one of them is still just like ours was before we added the porches and things. It makes a difference. Rich. What, uh, uh, and Alicia, this is a question for you, or maybe Pat already knows the answer. What are you actually able to do other than withhold an occupancy permit that would actually force people into completing what they've agreed to complete? That's a really good question. Pat, do you have any answers to that? I don't have an answer to that. We, uh, the city currently isn't doing anything. It, you know, you get your occupancy permit and that's pretty much it. So what if done. you, so, but, so if you, Pat, weren't given an occupancy permit because you hadn't done any landscaping, that's their only true hold on you as a builder? Well, as it is today, they could put a, process in place where they issue a temporary CBO that allows a person to, to move in a temporary is good for 60 days 30 days pick a number whatever it is and then if they don't complete their landscape it, it, so it requires another inspection and then if they completed their landscape then they get their permanent CBO if not there needs to be some sort of fine mechanism put in place I have a hard time believing that anybody that would work for the city, me included, if I was there, once I've let somebody in, 
I'm going to be pretty chicken to try to kick them out or give them a fine. I can only say, hey, uh, if you want this occupancy permit, you've got to complete the things on this list. And then that way there's no stress. The thing is, the city does it now with dogs. They do it with nuisance things, cleanup abatements, all kinds of stuff. There's no reason why code enforcement can't become a piece of that. <clears throat> Mayor, if I'm wrong, on the wrong path, let me know. <clears throat> No, I, I think so. I, I think that if we want to do this, and the, the message I'm getting is yes, we do, then we want it to be something that's enforceable. Uh, and not in a nasty way. I mean, I mean, I don't know how you put that, but uh, I think that there are things that people can do to make their lots more attractive uh, as a member of the community. Great. And that's really what we're looking for. Not Everybody's not got a green thumb. Uh, I got a lot of gravel in my yard. <laughs> you know? uh, we all come here, or most of us come here to retire. Uh, we're not necessarily out working in the yard, but there are some basics. Uh, we've probably got 14 trees on our lot. Uh, that's, you know, that's landscaping. Mm -hmm. uh, that and a, a couple of pieces of lavender and you're good to go. <laughs> so we, we do, um, we use, we've started using river rock as our baseline for <clears throat> landscaping out of the way that we put fabric under it and put some depth in it, but that's, that's, imper that's pervious. So that allows water to go through, actually does a little bit of a job of cleaning the water up um, <clears throat> we're, we spend about $5,000 a house. If you don't need to do that. You can spend $1,000 a house and make it look a whole bunch nicer than nothing. So, you know, you can go to Home Depot, buy a couple of rhododendrons. You can buy some lavender, put it in a little bit of a berm, cover it with river rock and boom, it looks great. So, you know, we can be as simple as that and just put some, and if you look at a cost of a new build, it's just a little tiny percentage of it, not even 1%. Um, so I think, I think that's more than doable. And, and, and with any builder that, that's going to put a house together, 2500 bucks on a $300,000 house is really not much. Yeah, I agree. So I am happy to come back anytime if you guys want to uh, talk more if you've kind of gone a direction and you want to, uh, you know, hear a little more. I'm sure you'll hear from the community as well. Richard. So, a, a question from an environmental standpoint uh, when I think about landscaping, the first thing that I think about is those lots that have nothing, they're just bare sand. And my concern is erosion. Uh, and I've been racking my brain since last night's uh, uh, council meeting. What kind of landscaping can the builder put in that curbs erosion, but still gives the new owner options? Um, and, and at this point, this isn't the time for that discussion, but I want to prime the pump, so to speak, and see if anybody has any good ideas of, of what kind of landscaping accomplishes uh, 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 mitigating erosion, and still giving the builder or, or the owner uh, plenty of options. Well, erosion, both wind and, and water. Sorry. Sorry, I'm on the phone. So it's hard to, hard to jump in. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I think, and I want to kind of see what you guys think about this, but what about just a preference for leaving the existing native landscaping, the myrtle and the salal and the shrubs that are naturally growing here? If people left a buffer of that around the front roadside around the sides around the back it would create beautiful landscaping along with the habitat that we need to keep our bird and wildlife populations that people enjoy so much and it would be practically no cost at all for the builders as well as very minimal maintenance for the owners so i'm wondering if we have an interest in preserving that or maybe making it more favorable to leave those things and we do have that in our code right now, uh, that that the natural landscape can be left, because especially in the south end, people like to do that because 
it's a windy uh, environment. It, it floods there occasionally, a few things like that. So they don't want to put a lot of money into landscaping. Yeah, Dan. I think what we're what you're trying to get at is I've got a brand new house across the street from me, and he did a pretty good job clearing the lot and left a lot of the natural vegetation. But 10 feet around the house or more, um, uh, probably more in the street side, what he did, he just went and put black grass in it. It's ugly. It is ugly. Mm. And, and so I think that's what we want to stop the builders from doing is just putting in black rock. And, and there's all sorts of ways to do it. And I think we can discuss that, come upon something, but yeah. And, and, and beauty is in the eye of the beholder as well. Uh, I have a, a neighbor a few streets down one of the that collects things from the ocean and he's got a million and two uh, of those sort of, I don't know what they are, things hanging. Uh, I don't think that's beautiful, but he certainly does. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Yeah. I wanted to comment on Tanya's comment and and uh, uh, Pat would have more knowledge than I do, but, but if the builder is in the process of building and he's trying to leave that natural vegetation, he's driving his trucks in and out of that lot during all of that building process. And so much of that natural vegetation gets destroyed by the vehicle traffic. And from a fire standpoint, uh, I, I remember reading it in the, in the Ocean Shores fire, 2017 is my memory, or 2013 or something uh, uh, that, that the fire department created. But there should be X number of feet between your house and the next nearest bunch of shrubbery. Uh, um, and on the size of our lots, if you've got a house big enough to live in, that doesn't leave a lot of natural vegetation, a lot of room left for natural vegetation. So Alicia just said that we're only allowed to use 40% of the lot. That leaves quite a bit of room for natural vegetation. And, and I think you're right. I just, at this point, just throwing out, just trying to, like I said, prime the pump, get, get our thought processes going. Uh, and as we get more into the discussion, uh, I think that a lot more ideas uh, and, and options are going to surface. And Alicia, um, when you're talking about 40%, are you talking about the footprint of the house or does that include driveway? Let me read what it says. It's in the, um, the municipal code 1750.210A, no dwelling structure shall occupy more than 40% of total lot area. So I, would, I would think structure is not driveway. Agreed. And okay. then the question yeah, is, it says dwelling structure. Does dwelling structure include the attached garage? And that may be. It we need doesn't specify that, but um, in number D, no dwelling shall be permitted on any lot where in the floor, main floor area of the main structure exclusive of open porches and garages. And it gives us a schedule of the size requirements, but it doesn't specify that. But that's what we've always practiced in the past is the dwelling structures and the accessory structures that go with it. That pretty much covers, if you calculate a lot out and you have a 20 foot setback from the front, 25 foot setback from the back and a five foot setback on the sides, that leaves approximately 40% in the center for the structures to go. Interesting. Okay, if, if you don't have any more questions for me, uh, do invite me back anytime you want to, that you have more questions or whatever. Uh, but I will let you guys get to it. You're getting down to the nitty gritty already. Uh, and that's good. Thank you so much. And thank you for taking this on, I hope. Uh, both of these, are interesting things to, to discuss and to try and come to some, some reasonable conclusions on that fit uh, a larger population of people. So I think it. that it will, it's a, it's a challenge, but I think it'll be interesting and, and useful. So thank you very much. I'll talk to you later. Thank you. Bye-bye.
Okay. Move on to the um, signing. Richard? You, you, you broke up entirely. I didn't hear any of what you just I said. On the signage. Okay, signage. So, so uh, um, I'd like to cut right to the chase on signage. And everybody's had an opportunity to read the latest draft document. Uh, and all of the changes are already in red with a few sidebar comments that explains some of those changes. Um, and the first question I would ask is, does anybody have any points that they would like to discuss? Because if it's in black, it's already the existing sign code. And if it needed changes, if it needed changing, then those changes have already been discussed and I put those in red. And so is there anything to discuss or do we wanna go uh, item by item or point by point? I think that that may be a big waste of most of our time. Any comments? If, if there are no comments, what I would like to suggest is that we approve the ordinance, the draft ordinance that you have. Um, I think there's one place, uh, and I forgot what its number is, 15, uh, it has a, it, it's about applicability. And somehow when I was editing, I dropped off the, the, the paragraph number. I fixed that on my copy of, uh, but other than that, what I would like the consensus, the planning commission's consensus to do is to fix those places where we said, okay, we're gonna delete this and substitute that. I'll make all of those changes. Then what I'd like to do is leave everything in red because when it goes up to city council, they can look at what's in red and say, oh, this is what changed. Uh, and they don't have to go compare the existing uh, ordinance side by side with the, with the draft ordinance. It's already there in red. And the other thing I'd like to do is as I was preparing for this discussion today, I went through and made what is basically an executive summary. Uh, and I quoted the page number and, and the paragraph uh, that was being addressed. And I would suggest that when we send this forward, that we send that executive summary along with all in an effort to make the, the uh, uh, council members task of assimilating the information easier. So what does everybody think about that? I think that's good. I like the idea of keeping everything in red. It makes it much easier for people to go through and concentrate on what the changes are. So the, the only other, oh, go ahead, Rich. And then I think we've kind of discussed uh, potentially approving this pending the uh, point three uh, wood candles. Right. Yeah. Pending the field trip. Right. And, and, and that's what I was going to say. And, and I think that if we, if we uh, uh, have somebody make a motion to approve this with the caveat that we are going to verify uh, uh, what point three foot candles above ambient light really looks like. And I know that that Rich Hart wants to look at that one and there may be others and and pat did you get the light meter i did it's here available to pick up at oh yeah, in the sales office so i would be happy when this meeting is over to drive down and pick it up uh and and then if anybody else uh, and i may go out tonight uh um if it's not raining uh but i can hold the meter or dan can hold the meter what whatever works for everybody um and when we send this up to the to, to, to Sarah, that we say with the caveat that we still have to verify how much how bright 0.3 foot candles above ambient really is. Um, and I'm comfortable that we're going to find that's a good number because actual scientists and sign experts came up with that number. But I think that it's well worth us verifying uh, uh, what 0.3 really looks like. So if that's a go, then after this meeting is over, I'm going to make those fixes on the document. I will send it to Dan along with my executive summary. Uh, and I don't think that it takes another vote. I think that Dan can just forward it on up to Sarah if that's what we all agree on. Oh, I think what we need to do is, yeah, we can, we can do that, but um, we don't want to send it anywhere until 
those people are concerned about the 0.3 foot cameras are in agreement. Okay. And, and either way, it is what I was trying to circumvent, if possible, uh, is having to, to wait for another, to have, wait two more weeks in order to get this all up to city council. But the sign ordinance has been what it's been for years. And so two more weeks is not really much of a burden. So it's whatever you guys want. Well, who, who's concerned about point three foot cameras? Like Rich is, anybody else? I'd like to see it, but I'm covering the scene I'll be happy with. Okay, then, then why don't we have the three of you uh, do that road trip you want to do or whatever and, and verify what it's like, or you can do it individually, I guess. We need to know what the budget is because I need to start in Las Vegas to get an eye on you know, this <laughs> and work our way back. So as long as we have a small budget, I'm in. Okay. Wear, sunglass wear sunglasses. I'll, I'll make a motion if you'd like. I'll make a motion that we move forward with the updates to the sign code pending the uh, uh, commission being comfortable with the light measurement index that we're referring to. And I'll second that motion. All in favor? Aye. 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 And Pat, tell me again where the light meter is physically located right now. It's in the real estate office at Oyehead Bay. And they will be open by, you know, between four and five this afternoon? Theoretically, yes. <laughs> is there if not, if not, can... check the loft. Is there a phone number I can call before I go? No, I, there'll be somebody there to find. You'll be okay. Fine. Okay. And they all know you're coming together. Perfect. Okay. Now, can the three of you guys coordinate to go look at the do the light meter thing? Do we want to go tonight? No, I'll go I tonight. Can. Then uh, um, my I have a pretty small car. If somebody has a larger car, uh, then and we'll volunteer. Uh, we can meet at one location and go, or how do we want to do that? Greg? Greg? Why don't you just tell us where to meet you? Well, there's two places that I think we need to check. And one is I think we need to look at the ambient light uh, at the casino uh, EMC, the uh, electronic message board. And there's not very much parking out there. So having just one car there makes sense. And the other place that I would like to check is, is the uh, sign at the Sunnyside Cafe. And again, there's not a lot of parking there except down, down at Ace and walk up or something like that. Uh, um, you know, so, so if we... Um, so, so that you know, tonight, I am available probably 7 p.m. I don't know if that's too late for you, but it is getting dark way later than than it was. So right. I don't think 7 p.m. is really too late, but that's the earliest I can make it back to Ocean Shores. I'm, I'm okay with 7 p.m. And, and uh, um, so back to Greg's question, do we want to meet at one location and, and all go in the car? Yeah, I've, I've got a car that's large enough for us. How about if we meet in the Ace parking lot, uh, and then we just go from yeah. there? Yes, I agree. Um, the pharmacy said they sent it to you. Works for me. Okay. So, meet, meet in the Ace parking lot at 7 o'clock? Uh, would you guys allow me 715? Yes. Yeah. I'm, I'm pushing it. Sure. Okay, I can do that. Okay, once you guys decide if that's good or not, why don't you email, uh, email me and I'll send it out to the rest of us. Um, and if, if it works, fine. If it doesn't, we'll have to come to the bumper. But, okay, appreciate you guys doing that. Perfect. Um, so I think that we've got a wrap on the sign ordinance. Uh, and Dan, I give it back to you. Okay, I'm going to go off script here just a little bit because I saw something on social media that um, I didn't particularly care for. And it has nothing to do with the planning commission. Um, 
somebody said that Grays Harbor Health Department was not doing a good job on the COVID-19. Um, I've, I've had both my shots. And if anybody's waiting to get a shot and, and hasn't signed up at Grays Harbor, I would highly recommend it. Um, they do max vac vaccinations at the, uh, at the you know, right near Home Depot. It took me a half an hour both times. And anybody that says they're not doing a great job, is wrong. So, I just <coughs> put that out there. Yeah, I was equally impressed. Yeah. Uh, I, I signed up, but Alex and I have not been, have not had an appointment offered yet. Uh, and I think that maybe that's because of all of the snow and the shipments being slowed down. So I'm looking forward to in, uh, um, uh, and Dan and Greg, what you have said is what I have heard over and over again. So, so the guys that are complaining, you know, I don't know what's up with them. Yeah, well, they're, they're not doing first time vaccines right now, they're doing second shots. Uh -huh. So, okay. So I didn't mean to want to take too much of the time, but I thought, for anybody who does it or knows somebody that needs a shot, get them to sign up because they do it kind of like first come, first serve in your age bracket. So the sooner you sign up, the sooner you get a shot. Okay, well, we're at item three, new tasks and assignments by the mayor. Well, we've done that. So annual retreat is the next item. <sighs> Any thoughts on that? If we just did it. Yes. <laughs> and that's I, normally I, that's normally what we do at the annual retreat is get the mayor's uh, direction about what she wants us to prioritize, and we just got it. That's true. I'll bring I, up Vegas I, one more time. Say that again. <laughs> yeah, let's go to Seabrook. So, so I I like what Greg just said. But the other question in my mind is the annual retreats that I've gone to for the planning commission, I didn't see them to be very much different than just a regular planning commission meeting. So so I don't know that we need to jump through a specific hoop. Unless you want to go to Seabrook. Well, the only thing that comes out of it is we, you know, everybody has their own idea that's on the planning commission of things we might want to work on, things that need improving within ocean shores. And, and it would give us it would give us a, uh, a chance to make another list once we get done with these couple of items uh, that we could put to the mayor that maybe would be something worthwhile to, to work on. So we could we could take 10, 15 minutes and at the start of one of the meetings or not do it. Eleanor, you're muted, Eleanor. You're muted, Eleanor. Don't mute it. I don't know how that happened. Can you hear me now? Yes. Um, I was just going to suggest that we plan an hour Zoom meeting uh, where we could all come with a list, but I don't see any point in doing anything more than that. Any other thoughts? Well, during last night's but council, not only did they discuss what the mayor presented, but there was also some discussion about the planning commission looking at standards for downtown. And I think that could be a future project, but I don't think yeah. we need to have a special uh, 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 open, what do we call it, um, a special meeting. I, th I think that when we're ready, we just ask the mayor if she wants us to look at that. They discuss when it's okay to meet in person again? Probably in a year or so. Yes. <laughs> Um, I agree with Richard that we should, after we complete the landscape and the building standards, we should start looking at downtown revitalization. But I don't have any particular topic other than that. So. Okay. I, I guess we've got a little, so I, I'll throw out one of mine. Uh, Two, two houses over from me, and, which is on the lake. The house has been gutted for about 10, 11, 12 years. 
They tore off part of the front of it, put plywood over the top of that, where the holes were, and it's 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 uh, now it's black because it's but it looks terrible. And there's no code that we have that makes the homeowner or who owns the property do anything about it. And then what these people do, they got a they've got a uh, a garage with an apartment over it, street side. They come down and use that and just park it. And there should be some mechanism that once a person guts a house, they have to do something with it, or there should be some penalty. And I don't know how we do that, but if anybody wants to see the house, just go to Bill Ellis Park, look across the lake, and it's to the left. And it's every time an electric boat comes by, um, you can tell the people around the town, they're pointing at it. I mean, it's just horrible. And there's there's other properties within Ocean Shores that are are also very bad. And I I just don't think that sets well for the city. Uh, you know, there's a lot of communities that put a time limit on, on things like that, and they enforce that time limit. But I also have seen uh, by the Ken Peterson Park, one of the houses that backs up to the park has had the windows broken out and boards put up for as long as I've been going there. And we need to set a time frame and we need to enforce the time frame. Well, we need a code. Okay, Tanya. Sorry, guys, I forgot I wasn't muted. Um, I, that was actually done. So what, what I would suggest, Dan, is as we look at, at the, uh, um, uh, the beautification ordinance and the, uh, the building standards, that we can incorporate what you're suggesting right into those standards uh, and that we can also suggest uh, a modification to the nuisance code standards uh, so that type of ugliness would be addressed in two different places in the in the code. Yeah. I think um, I think it might already be there, but it's it's in the abatement um, piece of code. Um, I know that there is definitely um, the city has an abatement abatement ordinance in process. And so um, <clears throat> I think it might already be there. It just may not be being enforced. Could Alicia look that up for us? I'm sorry? Could we have Alicia look that up for us? Alicia, are you still there? We do have, we do have an abatement code and I have talked with Sean about that particular house and I believe he said that it's not bad enough that they can abate it at this time because they're apparently living in the apartment. Uh, we might reach out to Sean and ask for his opinion on that. Maybe perhaps then we could look at that abatement code and put a little bit of uh, more teeth into it. Good idea. I think that okay. would be a great idea. Okay, anybody have anything else with that? I do think if possible, meeting in person is invaluable. And uh, I'd make a motion that we uh, meet at Pat's uh, upstairs loft. We can stay in town. <laughs> I like that idea. We're out by the fireplace, I don't care. I'll, I'll offer it up if you guys wanna do it masks of course but we uh i i'm going to be out of town until march 8th so it's got to be after that well we're, we, yeah, we have to... proclamation that says you still have to provide it remotely for the indefinite future so that yeah, I'm at home. sorry sir we don't have any choice in oh. this I'm a fan of keeping it remotely and in person. I think it makes it more accessible to everyone. And um, that way, if we're out of town, we can still join in. 
So as long as the city can support that, I think that's awesome to do it both ways. I would think in the next few weeks, um, most of us would be vaccinated. Um, and I would think with a mask, it would be very safe to have an in-person meeting. Well, if you have an in-person meeting, that means the, the uh, all anybody who wants to come to it can come to it. So that's the sticky issue. If you If you offer it by Zoom though, would that change whether or not people could be turned away? I don't know. No, you can't turn an open public meeting away. Like somebody wants to come to the person, if you're meeting in person, you have to accommodate them being in person. And how would we, how would whoever's hosting the meeting verify that everybody attending the meeting has had both of their vaccinations? I haven't had any vaccinations yet, and it's not for lack of not signing up. I just haven't been called yet, uh, and I'm uh, uh, I'm a little bit leery, even with a mask on, of attending a meeting for somebody who is potentially infected with COVID. Uh, I've got skin cancer and and you know other issues that could affect my immune system, uh, and I'm not anxious to go out in public with people who don't respect my right not to breathe their uh, uh, water droplets, their, their, their nose spray. Okay. Okay, guys. You know, we don't have to discuss it until the mayor tells us we can meet right. in person. It's a topic that we're just wasting time. Okay. Anybody got anything else? Um, I have a question before we move further on the, on the minutes. I have um, approved the agenda, but I don't have approving the minutes. Yeah, we did that. I don't remember. Well, we must have not done approving the agenda then, because I only have one done. No, we approved them both. We approved them both, and I think that Greg approved uh, the minutes, and I seconded. Okay. No, I, no. I, I, I didn't. Approval of the, the approval of the meeting agenda was Greg and seconded by Richard. The uh, approval of the minutes was Eleanor and Richard. Yeah, okay. I, that's why I had that name. Got it. Okay. Um, anything else? And Greg? Um, I wanted to to compliment Richard or whoever put together that great little uh, template for keeping minutes. That's that's uh, that's terrific. The only thing that I noticed when I used it this last time is that it does the uh, uh, council member membership doesn't reflect the actual list that we have today, and I'm not sure if that got fixed. Well, you can just go through and put it in and save it. Well, look, I'm not as talented as whoever put it up. I just know that when I want, I knew that Rich had approved or uh, 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 moved on on an item that I was recording, and his name wasn't on it. So I I faked it out so that it would come across. And I just let you know that all those drop downs, uh, some of them still have Don's name on them, okay. and um, I, great, I, and they don't. I, I thought that I had verified all of that, and I will re-verify uh, uh, by drop down by drop down, and I'll send that back out again. And I appreciate that you appreciate it. Thank you. Well, you are a peach. I didn't hear it. I said you are just a peach by doing that. Okay. Well, <laughs> you sort of look like one too. <laughs> exactly. Okay, does anybody else have anything more? All right, I'll see you guys at 7.15. Okay, do I, do I have a, a motion? Wait, we need a secretary for I'm next sorry. week. And it's probably my turn. It is, by the way. Secretary for next week. Do I have a motion to adjourn? Oh. So Feature to it. Second. Okay. See you guys next time.